This documentary serves as a tool to teach consumers the truth about ethanol. It will take you through the step-by-step -step process in making ethanol and tell you its benefits. Ethanol, the hidden panacea. My name is Pam Keck and I am the Assistant Director of Workforce Development and Scientific Projects here at the National Corn Ethanol Research Center. The facility was built uh, four years ago in 2003 and the purpose of the facility is to optimize conversion processes for corn to ethanol as well as other biomass feedstocks, uh, optimizing the amount of ethanol that we can get from various feedstocks. The process of converting uh, corn into ethanol is a pretty simple one. It's been done for uh, literally thousands of years and the way it's done here as well as at full scale facilities across the United States is that corn is first ground uh, and then it's dissolved in water and through the process of using enzymes and yeast uh, the long starch molecules composed of thousands of glucose molecules hooked together uh, are broken down and then converted using yeast into ethanol. Ethanol is a two carbon substance uh, glucose has six carbons in it, and the yeast breaks down that glucose, which is six carbons, into a two-carbon substance containing oxygen. If you think that the ethanol process weighs corn, think again. The process only uses corn that is used to feed livestock. DDGs, or distiller's dry grains, is what is left over after the corn goes through the ethanol process and is applied to animal feed as a supplement. Hi, I'm Scott Steiner. I work at the National Corn Ethanol Research Center. Uh, I serve as the plant coordinator here. This is corn receiving. Uh, this is where we unload all of our corn from corn trucks um, and we pneumatically convey them up into our corn bins. Uh, we have two of them, the 180 and the 190. Uh, they're both 1,000 bushel uh, bins. Uh, to give you an idea, uh, one bushel is roughly about 56 pounds. Hi, my name is Art Kotzebar. I'm the operations and pilot plant manager at the National Corn to Ethanol Research Center. Uh, I've been here since we've opened in September of 2003. Um, my previous experience is in the industrial gas industry. I've spent 21 years managing in the production and delivery of industrial gases. And in the last three years, I have spent uh, all my time managing the pilot plant operations. This is our hammer mill. This is where whole kernel corn is broken up into corn flour. Um, when the corn flour gets small enough, it'll pass through the holes in the screen, and that's how we control the different uh, size corn. Uh, particles which go into our system. The future of ethanol can be described as the 30 by 30 process and that is the government would like to produce 60 billion gallons of ethanol by the year 2030. 60 billion gallons of ethanol is 30 percent of the current consumption of gasoline, 140 billion gallons a year. So the government wants to produce 30 percent of the 140 billion gallons that we currently consume on an annual basis by the year 2030. In order to do that, we're going to need more than just corn as a feedstock. The National Corn Growers Association assures that us that we will be able to produce 15 billion of the 60 billion gallons of ethanol uh, by using corn as a feedstock without impacting uh, food, without impacting any of the other uh, export markets or other means of using corn. In order to make up that other 45 billion gallons, making 60 billion total, we're going to have to move into alternative feedstocks, namely cellulose feedstocks. So that would be things like corn stover, the plant that's left over once the corn is harvested, grasses, uh, and wood chips would be examples of other cellulose feedstocks. Each one of these breaker boxes next to me represents a, a pump or an agitator or some type of motor in our plant. Um, this wall represents about a quarter of all the buckets we have in this plant, or breakers we have in this plant. Um, this gives you an idea how, mu how much equipment we actually have here. Benefits from the production of ethanol are rather widespread. Uh, the first benefit is mainly to the consumer, and that's because it's going to, uh, by producing more ethanol more efficiently, it's going to reduce our dependence on foreign oil, it's going to help control oil prices, it's going to reduce emissions, and it, there's also benefits for uh, the industry in general. It's going to provide a lot more jobs throughout our country. And the farmers also benefit because the increased demand for corn is going to stabilize corn prices and it's going to allow farmers to have a more constant income. This is our slurry mixer. This is where ground corn from the hammer mill, uh, 190 degree water and enzyme all meet and become agitator mixed up. 
uh, the mixed up uh, corn slurry is then conveyed into our 990 slurry tank um, where it just provides uh, residence time for the enzyme to work on the corn slurry to break it down. The amount of time that it takes to convert corn to ethanol is about four days. And that is starting out with taking the corn, the whole kernel corn, grinding it, dissolving it in water, uh, adding the enzymes, fermenting it, and then distilling off or collecting that ethanol from that big mixture, as well as uh, drying the co-product to still those dried grains. It takes about four days. Ethanol, uh, the cost to produce ethanol, takes about a dollar per gallon. Uh, it's sold um, on the open market, uh, looking at the Chicago Board of Trade, for about $2.50 a gallon. Um, the amount of energy that it takes to make ethanol, there's a big uh, misconception about that. A lot of people think that you actually get less energy out of ethanol than what you put in. And, in fact, it's really just the opposite. You actually get out about 60% more energy uh, than what goes in to make ethanol. As opposed to gasoline, you actually only get out about 70% of the energy that it takes to make uh, gasoline. So in other words, if you put in one BTU of energy to make ethanol, you get out 1.67 BTU units of energy. And when you make gasoline, if you put in one BTU of energy, you only get out about 0.7 BTU in a, uh, units of energy for gasoline. This is our 950 liquefaction tank. Um, after the material is processed from the 990 slurry tank, it goes to a jet cooker, which sterilizes it and it goes into this tank. We add more enzyme here to help break up that starch. Our mission at the National Corn to Ethanol Research Center is to facilitate the commercialization of ethanol production to find better, more economical, and more efficient ways to produce ethanol in the industry. This is one of four of our fermenters. Um, each one can hold up to 6,000 gallons of material. Uh, the corn slurry uh, by this point has been broken down, the starch has been broken down into simple sugars. Um, when it goes into this tank it's called wort. Uh, we add yeast when it's in the fermenter and the yeast uh, breaks down those simple sugars into car carbon dioxide and ethanol alcohol. After we're done fermenting we transfer our uh, beer from a fermenter into our beer well where it's continuously fed to distillation. The cost to make ethanol is about a dollar a gallon and about 70% of that dollar is used to purchase the feedstock to make the ethanol. The remaining 30% is energy cost and then cost of the personnel uh, and other uh, chemicals that go into the process. These are emulsives. Um, after you get 195 proof off the rectifier, we send that 195 proof to the emulsives um, to take it up to 100 proof. So if you want to get a drink of alcohol, you want to take it off the top of the rectifier. The solids in distillation, uh, that leave distillation are called whole stillage. Um, the whole stillage is pumped to this, our centrifuge. The centrifuge separates out the solidest part of the whole stillage. It falls at the front and it's known as wet cake. Um, the more watery substance in part, part of the whole stillage falls at the back, known as thin stillage. One of the byproducts of producing ethanol is DDGS. It's dried to distillers grains. Uh, that is an animal feed product that is uh, produced from the process of grinding corn and removing the ethanol. Typically there's about 17 pounds of DDGS left for every bushel of corn that's produced. After the whole stillage goes through the centrifuge, um, this more solid material falls out and will be conveyed through our drum dryer. Uh, we have a furnace at the end of the drum dryer sends hot air through it to dry the wet cake out and then becomes DDG. We also apply syrup to it, um, which then makes it DDGS, dry distiller grains with solubles. This is our evaporator. Um, the thin stillage which comes from the back end of the centrifuge ends up here and gets concentrated into syrup. It goes from about 1.5% solids to about 32-35% solid, solid syrup, which we apply back on the DDG. There are three main advantages to burning ethanol instead of gasoline. The first is that it's a renewable fuel, so we can grow it over and over. We're not harvesting it from the ground, having it never be replaced like fossil fuels. Uh, it's also much cleaner burning than gasoline, which is, means that that's much better for our environment, helping uh, to eliminate some of the carcinogens that are put into the air by gasoline. By having it be a renewable fuel, it's also something that we know we can grow over and over and produce more and more, and this increases the stability of our own uh, agriculture by farmers having a place to sell the corn. And by having a renewable fuel that's cleaner burning and so forth, um, that in the end decreases our reliance on foreign oil. And since 63% of the petroleum that we consume comes from foreign lands, 
it's wonderful that we can grow our own uh, renewable fuel and thereby decrease our reliance on foreign oil. In the corn to ethanol conversion process, uh, one bushel of corn, which weighs 56 pounds, can actually be converted into nearly three gallons, or about 2.8 gallons of ethanol. At a facility like ours, not only uh, can we make ethanol and, and DDG, uh, we can also make carbon dioxide. Uh, we don't capture here, but on the industry they capture the carbon dioxide and they can compress it into uh, dry ice. Um, they can also use it to carbonate soda. There's many uses for it. Hi, my name is Nicole Kreitch and I work here at the National Corn to Ethanol Research Center. I've been here for about one year and um, some of the things we do here at the center is um, we take samples from the pilot plant, which is out back, and we run various tests on them to uh, see how the plant's coming along. This is our ethanol storage tank. Holds about 6,000 gallons of 200 proof, or also known as anhydrous alcohol. Uh, this white tank here is a gasoline tank that we use uh, for denaturing the alcohol. And this meter here is used for loading out the ethanol into a truck. This is our DCS system or distributed control system. We can pretty much monitor all of our temperatures, levels, pH, um, and flows um, throughout our entire plant. We can also control them from here. What we can do to increase the consumption and use of ethanol is to continue to encourage our politicians to be behind it. By having the government, that is the president, uh, endorse the Renewable Fuel Standard as well as the Energy Act, uh, that's a huge step towards encouraging people to produce ethanol uh, to provide tax incentives to also produce it as well. The petroleum industry for years has enjoyed uh, tax incentives and tax credits and having this in the ethanol industry is no different than what's been done with petroleum as well as other commodities here in the United States. One of the ways that we can increase the usage of ethanol is by increasing the number of E85 pumps across the United States. Currently there are just a little over a thousand E85 pumps in the entire United States. Uh, Illinois alone has about a hundred of those. Um, so the amount of gasoline that we currently consume is about 140 billion gallons of gasoline. Ten percent of that then would be 14 billion gallons. Uh, so E10 is a gasoline mixture that has 10 percent ethanol and 90 percent gasoline. Any car on the road today can use E10. In order to consume the 60 billion gallons of ethanol that the United States wants to produce by the year 2030, we then have to start looking for other ways to consume more ethanol, and that would be through the use of E85 vehicles. E85 vehicles are flexible fuel vehicles, and those vehicles can use up to 85% ethanol, 15% uh, gasoline in their cars. And so a couple of ways that we can then increase the amount of ethanol would be to have more E85 pumps in stations across the United States, as well as for car manufacturers to make more E85 or flexible fuel vehicles. Remember that any car built after 1970 can use E10, and check to see if your car is E85 flex fuel compatible. Ethanol production can be increased greatly by talking to our politicians. The first step to a cleaner world is spreading the knowledge about this green alternative fuel. According to the EPA, gasoline is the largest source of man-made carcinogens. Ethanol is proven to release 32% fewer emissions than gasoline. Ethanol reduces 25% of all CO2 emissions and reduces harmful compounds such as benzene and other aromatics. Ethanol is a clean burning alternative fuel that could potentially drive the American economy. It would not only benefit the consumer's pocketbook, but it would also help our U.S. farmers. It is roughly 20 cents cheaper per gallon and the fuel is grown and produced here in the United States. It costs less to refine and its production could end our reliance on foreign oil sources. The President has commanded that by the year 2030, we will be producing 60 billion gallons of ethanol each year.